So in terms of the class two and three buildings, so they've actually been permitted since the mid 90s. So the, the requirements for these low rise buildings hasn't changed. So, and Paul alluded to some of the work that was done uh, by uh, Professor Vaughan Beck uh, in, the, in the 90s, uh, which led to the code change. So since about 94, we've been able to build three storey um, uh, timber framed apartment buildings. And then in 2014, following a submission from the industry, we also enabled that to be extended to class three buildings. So typically hotel, motel type uh, developments. So these buildings for low rise are all non-sprinklered. So you don't need any sprinklers for these buildings and that's still the case today. What I thought I'd do is just, because I know we've got a range of uh, professions in the audience, was just quickly go through um, some of the, uh, the requirements. So for a class two and three buildings under, their, uh, under the low rise DTS provisions, so you can do a one storey with a, a type C construction. Basically, um, it's the least uh, fire resistive form of construction. Or you can do three storeys and above for type A, which is the most fire resistive construction. And then you have uh, two storeys is a type B, which is somewhere in between. So those forms of construction are all stipulated in the NCC. But specifically in relation to uh, timber buildings, so for type A construction, so the, the most fire resistive. So for class two and three buildings, timber has a concession in the NCC under specification C1.1 uh, clause 3.10. So basically for a, a class two or three building, as long as the rise in stories isn't more than three, you can use timber framing throughout. So the whole structure can, can be timber framed. Any insulation you put in into the, the structure itself, be it for thermal efficiency or acoustic provisions, uh, needs to be non-combustible. And you need an automatic smoke alarm system throughout the building. So they're the key requirements for, for low-rise uh, timber buildings uh, for three storeys. But we can actually go to four storeys if the lower storey um, is used for some sort of car parking, typically, uh, application. It has to be constructed of concrete or masonry. So in effect, the ground floor would be a car park, concrete or masonry, and put three levels of timber above. There has to be a separation between the ground floor and the next storey above. So you need to achieve a fire resistance level of 90 uh, at that floor ceiling level. So the, the floor, ground floor, floor ceiling, 90, 90, 90. Three storeys of timber frame above. For the type, the same for the type B construction, except it's uh, clause 4.3. Type B is that sort of um, intermediate form of construction. So you're only permitted to go to two storeys and that's why that first table, I put that up there. So you're not sort of saying, well, why is it only two? That's the way the, the NCC is drafted. So we can only do two storeys um, for type B construction. Again, timber frame throughout, non-combustible insulation and uh, automatic smoke alarm. You can have a ground floor in a, a car park, but you're still um, only at two storeys. So we have a car park with type B construction with a one storey above uh, in timber framing. So that's just a bit of a, the, the difference between the type A and type B construction. Type C is one level only. Paul touched on this and I thought I'd expand uh, a little bit. There's been a lot of discussion about using um, external cladding we saw the, the building fire in Melbourne with the, the high-rise building at La Crosse, uh, the La Crosse building, high-rise um, facade um, that um, uh, combustible uh, that went up. In relation to low-rise buildings under the concession uh, for, for timber, basically it says you need not comply with the requirements of clause C1.9A. And basically that is for any of the non-combustible material requirements. So C119A covers that. So we can still have our timber framing provided we've got that non-combustible insulation and smoke alarm system. But what clause C1.9A says, that with that concession for timber, you need not comply with the requirements for the walls, external walls, including all components incorporated in them, including the facade covering. So timber cladding on low-rise buildings has been around since the mid-90s and is still permitted under the NCC. Questions? Yeah. Uh, 
question. How does college star included? <coughs> it doesn't fit in there under, the, <coughs> under that provision. So that's a concession for timber. The work that Paul alluded to that was done by uh, Beck and Jung uh, looked at timber cladding on the outside of buildings where they compared with um, existing non-combustible construction. So in terms of other forms of cladding, I have no comment to make on their use, except that the concession provides us to, uh, enables us to use timber uh, on the outside. So just in terms of the low-rise buildings, so we can do three-storey type A construction, four storeys if you've got a ground floor car park in masonry or concrete. Any insulation that's installed, non-combustible, need an automatic uh, smoke alarm system, and we can have external timber cladding, only for low-rise buildings. So in terms of the deemed to satisfy um, requirements, Paul alluded to this, there's a whole suite of design guides. Um, I had a building surveyor question me about the external use of timber cladding, and so I trawled through old publications. I couldn't find the very first one, this technical guide number two. So I couldn't find uh, the original one that had been put out, but in 2001, we clearly stated external walls you could use uh, weatherboard, plywood, or whatever. Um, so um, from an industry perspective, it's always been that way. Um, and so all the changes, and I think where a little, I'll use the words nervousness has come about is with the high-rise building. Um, I was down there the morning after the fire and it was, wasn't a very nice site. And I can understand from a fire um, services perspective, you don't want to be fighting a, a fire on a 20-storey building, but a three-storey building isn't too difficult from the outside. The walls are still fire, you, you achieve your fire resistance level. So you still have a fire rated wall with a timber plating on it. So, sorry, yes. This is probably a stupid no, no stupid questions. No, but for me, no, no. <laughs> when you say that those wood solution design guides yep. comply with DTS, yep. how has that been determined? Who has said that it complies with DTS? Or when we, when we develop up these guides, we interact uh, with the regulators. Um, I'll, I'll probably, I won't say it as much with these earlier guides for the low rise. Um, I didn't have a lot of ex um, exposure during that phase, but definitely with the mid rise buildings. We, have, we gave technical drafts uh, to the fire services, state based regulators, the Australian Building Codes Board and sought their input and feedback. Um, I don't want to sound silly, but the Wood Solutions Guide are basically viewed as, as the accepted practice for, this, for um, these types of buildings. Um, it's the go-to document. Uh, like I say, we, we engage professionals to do these um, under the Wood Solutions banner. So they're, they're very robust. We don't just release them for, just for releasing them, but they have a lot of review and peer review of the documentation. So it's an industry... Um, uh, document to support the DTS provisions. Mm -hmm.